Greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus. This is Tony Brew Ministries welcoming you for another teaching session. The title this time is God the Creator. God is our Creator. God created an orderly world and mankind in His own image after His likeness. Our golden text, of course, is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you have problems here, you will have problems all throughout the Bible. God created everything in the beginning. It may sound too simple. Science tries to make it complicated. But God is the creator. He tells us in his word how he did things. Maybe not every intricate detail, but he tells us what he did. In fact, we have the Creator God creating everything after the way that he wanted it, the order that he wanted it, and we're given the order of creation. You can read Genesis chapter 1, and it will tell you how everything was created in their particular day. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And here is how it was in the beginning. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It was, like we would say, just nothing. God created something out of nothing and hung it on nothing. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. All the three persons of the Godhead are involved in creation. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost are all involved in creation. Psalm 96 verse 5, For all the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. There is a vast difference, just like the difference between light and darkness. There is a difference between our God and the so-called gods, the dead gods of this world. All the gods of the nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Jeremiah chapter 10, verse 11. Thus shall ye say unto them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth, even they shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. God says, I'm going to judge these false gods. He did that in the land of Egypt by bringing Israel out of the land of Egypt. And he pronounced judgment upon the gods of Egypt. And you can see that very plainly when you read the book of Exodus. He, that is God, hath made the earth by his power. He hath established the world by his wisdom and hath stretched out the heavens by his discretion. Discretion is another word for understanding. God's knowledge, wisdom, and understanding are all involved in creation. God created everything, and he also created it in order, by order and design. And we can read about this. I think it's important to read the order of creation. It may be a little redundant to you. Longer scripture reading than sometimes we do on these sessions. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 3, God said, let there be light, and there was light. In Hebrew, it's like this, light be. Light was. God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. It tells you what God did on each day. And this is the first day. God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. And let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. He makes the skies the expanse on this day. God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree 
yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth. And it was so. A wise creator, God, created fruit trees, which would produce fruit, of course, and the fruit would have the seed in itself. That is a wise creator, God, that would do that. You take the orange. The orange has the orange seed in them. We have seedless oranges now, of course, that has been done by cultivation and man's design, but you still have to have a seed. You cannot have seedless oranges and grapes forever. You've got to have seed to produce more. The inside of the apple, the apple core, you have apple seed, good old Johnny apple seed, you know, Tony apple seed, or Jill apple seed, whatever. But the thing is, the fruit tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself. What a wise creator God he is. And the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit whose seed is in itself after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. God made all these things. Not just as the earth would be a haphazard thing that was flung out here so minuscule and small among these other great things. But the earth was the focus, the central of God's creation. And we're not talking about heaven where God is. We're talking about the earth, that God created the earth. God created the sun and the moon and the stars for the purpose of the earth, for mankind upon the earth to shine on the earth. Not that the earth would just be there in the way somehow and we'd have to deal with that. Science turns it all around. God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Notice he set them for the express purpose in the expanse of the sky to give light upon the earth. Not that the attention would be brought to the sun and the moon and stars, but they would shine upon the earth and they would give attention to the earth. And you see how mankind has gotten it backwards. He sets the lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. It was good. It didn't turn out to be a mistake that science found out years later. It was good. And what God says is good is good. The evening and the morning were the fourth day. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life and fowl that may fly above the earth and the open firmament of heaven. And God created great wells and every living thing that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let fowl multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Sounds like God likes a lot of chirping birds, and action, and moving in the waters. God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. God made the cats and the dogs and the cows and the horses. And he made every living creature the creeping thing, the cow, the cattle, everything that we know and things that we don't even know, God made it all after his kind. He took time, as we would say time, to make every living creature just like he wanted it. Created 
in God's image. Now we come to God's supreme creation. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. God blesses them. He gives them dominion over everything. Man was supposed to have dominion over everything. When man sinned, of course, he lost that dominion. He actually gave that dominion to Satan. Satan never had dominion over anything. In his first state, of course, the angel of light, Lucifer, he had a high position as a covering cherub at the throne of God. But when pride entered his heart and he fell and became the devil, Satan, Satan didn't have anything except evil. And he brought evil into the garden. Mankind chose evil instead of good ate of the tree that God said not to eat of. In the day that you eat of it, God said you'll die. The serpent said you will not surely die. God knows that if you eat it, you'll be like him. That was a lie, but that's what he told them. You'll be like him. You'll know good and evil. They already knew good, and they didn't need to know evil. Genesis chapter 1 tells what God created. Light is spoken out of darkness to begin creation. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven and earth. In wisdom, power, and love, our God is an awesome God. Our God reigns. Sing with me, our God reigns. Let all the earth sing. So God is reigning, and He is the Creator. He creates light out of darkness. And it all continues in orderly fashion, progressively, until it climaxes with the creation of mankind in God's image after his likeness. God sees all that he has made, and behold, it was very good. He says to this point, Tob. Tob. And now he says, Tob ma'od. Very good. The evening and the morning were the sixth day. God ends his work on the seventh day and rested. He blesses the seventh day and hallows it as a Sabbath of rest for all the future generations of mankind. So, whether it's Saturday as we know it to commemorate the Jewish Sabbath under the law, or Sunday being the Lord's Day to celebrate the resurrection, the principle of taking one day out of seven for rest and worship is not only expected of the Lord, but is also intended for our good. Mark chapter 2 verse 27 and 28, and he said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. God rested the seventh day, and Jesus reiterates the Sabbath day. He is the Lord of the Sabbath day, and he encourages us to use it for his glory and for our good. Genesis chapter 1 tells us that God created man. Chapter 2 verse 7 tells us how he did it. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Three things that happen. God forms man. That's the corporal body image of man from the dust of the ground. And as Dottie Rambo said, he's just lying there, a lonely lump of clay, lifeless and cold. God breathes the breath of life and makes man a living soul. The breath of God. God breathes life into man. He breathes into his nostrils the breath of life. And man becomes a living soul. Without the breath of God, we're nothing. He gives life. Jesus came to give life. We who are born again have life. You can have life today by turning your life over to Jesus Christ. You think you're living. You think you're having a good time but you're nothing without Christ. Turn the controls of your life over today to Him. Allow Him to be the Lord of your life. Man is created 
formed from the dust of the ground. God breathes into his nostrils the breath of life, and man becomes a living soul. Every soul, every person who has been conceived since Adam has that same breath of life, that spark that begins at conception. That's why it's an abomination to kill the unborn baby because it's a person created in God's image after his likeness. He has the breath of God. She has the breath of God resident in their being, and they're allowed to form and to grow and to be born. They're a living person, living soul, just like Adam and Eve was. Psalm 139, verse 13 through 18. For thou hast possessed my reins. You know my limits. You know what I'm all about. Thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. He told Jeremiah, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. There's no way that you can say that's not a baby. Absolutely, it is. He is or she is a baby, a person created in the image and the likeness of God. I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. It's not just a tissue. It's not just a mass. It's not just a mistake. It's not just a throwaway. It's not just a convenience. It's a person. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. The New Testament says in him we live and move and have our being. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect. And in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. God knows our creation process. He's responsible for it. He sees our development. He sees our growing. He sees our birth. He sees our life. Glory to God. The Holy Ghost bears witness to what I'm talking about today. God is involved in the creation and the design and the fashion and the growing and the development of every person. You know what I'm like. You know how I am. You know all my members. They were in your book, even when they were not fashioned, even when they were incomplete, even when they were not perfectly developed yet. You saw all my members, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God, how great is a sum of them. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. We stand in awe of our great Creator God. Sing with me how great is our God. How great is our God. All will see how great is our God. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are God, the Creator. You are ruler of heaven and earth. You are the king of the universe. We love you. We bless you. We honor you. We praise you today. The souls that are listening to my voice right now who have not received Jesus Christ as their Savior and made you their Lord, I pray that you would give them the grace and the faith, the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding to do so right now. Receive Christ. Make him your Savior and your Lord. Father, I seal this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. God the Creator has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries.